but arguably the best scape I've ever done. Let me know in the comments what you think. So it's uh, five o'clock in the morning and I'm about to get ready to do the install down at Canary Wharf in London. And the dogs are awake, I'm making my early morning coffee. Tommy, hello, <laughs> you're a good boy. Hello, Betty. And the dogs are awake and playful. I'm about to set off uh, to pick up Ty to escape a 500 gallon X reef tank. Loads of driftwood, loads of stone, loads of gravels. Loads of plants, loads of CO2 kit. Uh, it's going to be an epic install. Hope you enjoy it. Here I am at Ty's place, ready to pick him up. And I've got a feeling he's got some epic aquascapes in here. So hopefully, take a look at those in a minute. Let's knock on gently on the door. It's quite early in the morning still, it's 7 a.m. Here he comes, here he comes. Hey, buddy. <laughs> How you doing, mate? It's a bit early for you. Oh, no, I'm okay. Oh, good. Oh, okay, come in. I've been up since 4 a.m. 4? Yeah. You've got some tanks to show me? All the lights and everything are off. Oh, is it going to scare the fish? Yeah, they won't be awake. Oh. When we come back. When we come back? Then everything will be... We'll come back, we'll look at them. We'll I promised good. everyone. So we're just unloading the car now into the bottom of the apartment block. All the wood. Some of the rock, most of the, all the rocks, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. 10 litres of fertiliser. Hello. Here's Shiraz, say hello. Oh, this hi. Is, <laughs> <laughs> this is the client uh, with a massive tank. Um, we, we did a vlog uh, a couple of months ago, didn't we? Yeah, we To did. introduce yeah, yeah, the project, yeah, yeah. so. Thinking, are we going to get the wood up here? Yeah. Excited? Oh my God, the, the bog wood. Oh my days. Do you, do you like it? It's insane. So, quick before the door shuts, Ty. So here we are in Shiraz and Pam's beautiful apartment. We're actually going to move this, aren't we? Let's rotate it around in a minute. That's why we have to do that. we've got the big man with us to help with that. Yeah. And then we've got all the beautiful hardscape. Oops, sorry. The beautiful rocks. <laughs> Look at the view as well. Look at this. Okay, so we're in the middle of moving this. How big is it, Shiraz? What's uh, the volume? 2,000 litres. 2,000 litres, 500 gallons for That's American it. friends. That's it. <laughs> um, so we're sliding it literally uh, in position. It was positioned kind of peninsula style this way, and now we're kind of positioning it this way, basically. Uh -huh. It's very heavy, and that's why I've got my very strong friend Ty with me. <laughs> and it's in position, I think it looks great. In the corner, we've got the viewing. Angle here, you can sit here, and we're ready to install the wood next. This is going to be one of the actual most important parts of the whole process. The wood is the backbone of the entire aquascope, so if we get that right, everything's going to go flow from there. We're going to actually fix the wood in position with some Oise foam fix, we'll show you that in more detail later. That's just going to make sure everything stays absolutely affixed to the glass and the wood pieces to each other, so nothing's going to float away after we've filled with water. So yeah, that's the next job. I'm just getting my breath back. <laughs> oh, and a t-shirt. Uh, I did sweat so much that Shiraz has kindly donated me this beautiful NASA t-shirt. Thank you. So we need to bear in mind when we're composing the wood, how it's going to flow. It needs to look natural. We can't just put the pieces of wood in randomly and hope for the best. We need to come up with a coherent design. And because we've got multiple pieces, there's more opportunities to create something more beautiful, but also more opportunities to make errors. So we really need to think carefully about the whole thing. Now, I'm at a disadvantage because I'm actually in the tank and I can't see what I'm doing from where the guys are going to be viewing it from. So I'm going to have to rely on some feedback, or I can just keep coming in and out of the tank. We could have a mirror, actually. Do we have a mirror? So here I am inside the tank. Now what I was saying is we can't, I can't see what the guys are seeing. So Shiraz has kindly produced a lovely mirror. So now I can actually see exactly what I'm doing. So Okay, so the wood is in position and it's safe to say that we're all very happy with it. 
it came together relatively quickly. We used a mirror so I could see what I was doing. Had some great help from Ty to give me some additional advice and really, really excited to carry on with the project. Next step is to install the rocks. So we've got some beautiful millennium stone here, six pieces all together, weighing in all 60 kilos. I'm gonna jump in the tank again. Ty's gonna pass me the rocks and I'm gonna position them appropriately. So the rocks will go in and then what we need to do is actually fix everything together. a Waze foam fix and it's used to adhere but in this case it's going to be used to adhere the wood to either the wood itself and then eventually to the glass so the whole idea is we have a coherent structure adhered that's the right word yeah. adhered to the glass so we don't get floating wood it is a very dense wood and it might not float but it's not worth taking a risk especially in something this size Upstairs, let's go. Terrace. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Where'd you get your t-shirt from, Ty? Aquabase in Sao Paulo from... Uh, Andre? From there. Andre and, and uh, Luca. Oh, Luca. Luca Caraca oh. and Luca, yeah, yeah. And Andre... Uh, Angarco? Yeah. I'm meeting them in Chicago. Give them a Andre's, Andre's speaking. If you if you ask him very nicely, they might bring a hoodie as nice as the one they gave me last time. Exactly. They nice. bring one of his massive cigars. Oh, he, you don't see him without a cigar. <laughs> this is outstanding. This is awesome. So we're at the top of Shiraz's apartment block and this is the London skyline. We're literally right in the centre of London. Next job is to install the substrate, which is a mixture of Hugo Kamishi natural gravel and Wio elderly stones. And these are positioned around the Millennium Stone to add a natural transition. Okay, day two of the install at Shiraz's place. I'm just uh, walking the dogs and I'm gonna take the train down to London today. I did drive yesterday with Ty, uh, but uh, the train is the most economical option and Monday is an absolute nightmare to drive in London. The, all the hardscape's obviously done, so now it's just a case of planting and then filling, getting all the kit running, the lights on, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Hope you enjoy it. We are in Shaz's... Shaz's? You're not Shaz. Shiraz. You're Shiraz. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Shiraz and Pam's beautiful apartment. Day two. And as you can see, the hardscape is looking absolutely fantastic. We glued the wood down with the special Awaze foam fix. Shout out to those guys. Really, really great product. Dried really quickly. Really solid. Super impressed. I'm going to use that in future installs. So the wood's completely secured down, um, glued to the actual glass, glued to each other, so there's absolutely no chance that it can float. Then we put eight bags, eight 15 kilo bags of the uh, natural gravel, and then five large pieces of millennium stone, absolutely beautiful, characterful rock here, and then some graded gravel, some Wio natural elderly gravel around that, just to enhance that overall natural appearance. But I think you all agree, hopefully, it is looking absolutely phenomenal already from all sides. Uh, most importantly, Shiraz and Pam are really happy with it. And I'm really excited. I mean, I'm going to keep talking about how excited I am about this project, but we've got some, I'll, I'll tell you all about it at the end because it's a really cool name for the scape. And we'll explain why it's called that name as well. It's a very special reason. But I wanted to go a little bit geeky on you. As you can see, we've measured out perfectly where we're going to hang the Ecotech Radion XR30s, four of them. Were originally used to grow uh, Shiraz's corals, but now of course used to grow aquarium plants. And the great thing about these light units, I'll show you them later, is they're completely programmable so we can use them uh, to, you know, for a more appropriate spectrum for freshwater plants. So we're gonna, we hang our plumb line to make sure we're completely perpendicular to the ceiling so they're all absolutely bang on. We wanna make sure everything is super in line and perfect, excited to carry on. So we're gonna drill those, we'll mount the lights later and then we're gonna plant, exciting. Okay, so we're hanging this plumb line 
all the engineers out there will know what that is. And we're just trying to make sure we're getting the holes that are going to be drilled for the radions in exactly the right place. So, uh, Shiraz is an engineer. I come actually from an engineering background, believe it or not. Fun fact, I did an electrical mechanical engi engineering apprenticeship oh, in um, a steel factory on the Isle of Sheppey. You ever been there? Isle of Sheppey? No, I haven't. You don't need to go, mate. Sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was actually a steel recycling factory and it was a, the most horrible place I've ever worked, apart from in the desert in Afghanistan, but not dissimilar in temperature actually, because I was working a lot on the hot metal cranes. And uh, when you're working up in that, at that height above hot metal arc furnaces in like thermal insulated overalls, hard hat, face mask, goggles, you know, this is a piece of cake really compared to that. Okay, as you can see, we've got the mounting holes there all in position for the Ecotech radions, they'll be put in place after we've planted. So next job is to flatten out all of the sand I managed to destroy by climbing in there and then we'll start preparing the plants. Exciting times. We've got 200 pots of beautiful aquarium plants here supplied by Aquarium Gardens, mostly Tropica, a classic mix of the usual Epiphytes, Java Ferns, Anubia, Spooka Philandra, and we've got some slow growing rooted plants and also some beautiful red stem plants. I'll talk about each species in more detail once I've prepared them all, but I'm going to do the most epic time lapse that I've probably ever done preparing them all. How exciting! Okay, the plants are prepared. It's a pretty epic job, probably two, three hours altogether. We'll go through the species one by one. Limnophila aromatica, this is gonna turn into a beautiful red stem plant. Then we're leading into the Staragani repens, foreground stroke midground plant. That's gonna look great around the rocks, uh, just around the lower parts of the wood. Hydrocotyl verticalata, this is like a mushroomy plant. So it'll grow a vertical stem with like a, a kind of a horizontal kind of round leaf, very effective. Then we're moving on to some epiphyte plants. These are plants that are gonna be attached to the wood. Classic trident fern and java fern combination. Anubius, again, more epiphytes. We've got the regular Anubius uh, bartari, Anubius nana, and Anubius petite, the smaller leaf. Then we've got some Hygrophila compact. That's gonna combine with the Staragani repens really beautifully. Slightly bigger leaf shape, but similar growth form. It's gonna form these really nice, dense, compact bushes around the foreground and midground. And then this is really interesting. Uh, recently been using this in my Awaze Highline 400. This is Lobelia cardinalis mini. And it's actually a very sustainable stem plant. Again, stays low and bushy, and that's gonna add a complementary texture against the Hygrophila compact and the Styrogony repens. We've actually got a carpeting plant here. We're not going for a full carpet, but I just wanted to give some accents of foreground plants. It's gonna gradually, slowly spread across the substrate. Very easy to maintain, very slow growing and low light tolerant. This is Marcellaire Hirsuta, a nice dark green leaf. You'll get slightly bigger leaves and they'll be nice and round. It's gonna look really beautiful. And then we've got an amazing selection of crypts, classic low maintenance. Really beautiful. We've got the Cryptochrony Balanci. This is going to grow tall and wave around in the water flow really beautifully. We've got Cryptochrony Beckettii Pecci, a classic kind of mid ground, uh, slightly smaller than the Cryptochrony Wendettii Green. Probably going to mix these up and get this really beautiful mixture of colour and textures together. Whereas the Balanci is going to go mainly in the corner here to add this beautiful kind of arching over effect eventually. Maybe we'll put some portion, a portion here as well, just to add another sense of interest and the fish are gonna swim through. I'm, I'm excited just talking about it. Then we've got a really great mixture of Buca Philandra. We've got Buca Philandra Red, Buca Philandra Keddy Gang, and Buca Philandra Mandel Red. 
These are again epiphyte plants, slow growing, very similar to Anubius in their growth form, really low maintenance. These are gonna be wedged in as many places as I can. And in those places I can't wedge, I'm gonna simply use super glue. And then finally, we've got the Bulbitis hudelotii, another classic epiphyte plant. This is gonna add this really lovely texture, this kind of serrated leaf, will eventually turn like a translucent green color. And again, slow, fairly slow growing, and just gonna add uh, extra sense of uh, texture that's gonna blend in with the other epiphytes beautifully. So there we go. Beautiful selection of low maintenance, relatively easy plants that are gonna hopefully fill up this 2000 litre, 500 gallon aquascope. And you know, this is like, this is like the canvas with the, you know, the backbone, the skeleton of the layout. And now we're kind of furnishing it with the flesh, if you like, or the, the paint to our canvas. So super exciting. I'm gonna probably do the time-lapse of the whole thing. It's 200 pots worth here. It's another few hours of work. So let's crack on. Okay, so we've planted all of the crypts. We've got the balancei in the back right there and a little touch of it just here. It's because it add an extra accent of height just to break the scope up a little bit, add an extra interest. And then we've got a mixture of the Ventitii green, the Albida brown and the Beckettii Pecci, not randomly placed, little groups, little, um, little essences of popping of colours, especially the Beckettii Pecci, that's going to look great, and the Albida brown is going to give us much kind of finer browny red texture when it's mature under these great lights. So super excited, I have to say, it's very hot in, <laughs> up there. So uh, if I'm sweating and you're probably wondering why George is half naked all the time, it is very warm. Next we're going to plant the Limnifera aromatica, beautiful, and it's aromatica. It smells beautiful, you smelled it already. Very wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got the, this is the main dominant focal point plant. This is going to turn a beautiful red and purple colour and add a really kind of impactful uh, focal point to the scape. So it's really important to position this appropriately. So with, according to the rule of thirds or golden ratio, we kind of want to, and it's definitely kind of triangular layout, especially with the balance side taking the main height there on the extreme right. I think it's going to be a great place to put it just in this hole around here. So I'll plant the stems almost individually and it'll give the best chance of spread and it's going to reward Shiraz and Pam with a beautiful focal point, this beautiful red colour. And the leaves are actually like a serrated texture. It's one of my favourite stem plants, very similar to the Limnophila hyperoides. After that, we've got the Hygrophila compact. We're going to plant that intermittently around the stones to add uh, transitional uh, plants, go from this, obviously from the kind of low level of the, the substrate up to the rocks and the woods. And then a similar concept with the Staragini, slightly finer texture than the Hygrophila compact. So I'll probably mix these together and that's going to give a really like complex yet naturalistic kind of look. So super excited to plant these and get really hot and sweaty again. <laughs> okay, next plants are our beautiful selection of foreground midground plants. We've got the Hydrocotyl verticalata. I'm going to actually use this as a monoculture kind of field and the reason I'm going to do that is because the aquarium is so big it's really going to showcase the plant. Normally we'd use it as an accent between different species but we've got other plants to do that with. You know it's such a great canvas that so we can really kind of play with it. So the hydrocotyl vertical is going to go along here around the back. It's actually going to pop up fairly tall I'm hoping you'll be able to see it just behind the Staragani and the Hygrof and the Compact and then all across the left here and across the front I'm going to mix the Lobelia cardinalis mini. That's going to go as a transitional plant between the sand and the rock. And then in front of that, I'm going to plant the Marcellaire hirsuta, the low, low light tolerant foreground carpeting plant. So let's get planting. More time lapses. How exciting. Started to fill up uh, with water straight from the tap. Uh, hard tap water here, that's no problem for these plants. We've got good CO2, good lighting and you can use hard tap water, I always do, and it's no problem. Final plant choice, we've got a beautiful collection of epiphytes, we've got various anubias, various bucophalandra, bulbitis and java ferns. I'm going to put all those in now as a time lapse of course. How many time lapses have we done? This has got to be like the 20th time lapse. <laughs> awesome. The more the merrier. I reckon I can like string it all together in like a 10 second time lapse like 
how to escape a 2,000 litre aquarium in 10 seconds. Awesome. I'm going to do that. Should do it, yeah. yeah why, why not? not? Right. Okay, let's get them in there. Fun. So the tank's fully planted. We're filling up slowly but surely with water. Uh, Shiraz is fitting the lights. Uh, four Ecotec Radion XR30s. Excuse the background noise, we are very near a railway station. And it's looking amazing. Are you happy with it? Very happy with it. Excited to get the lights on. Yeah. Yeah, it looks a million dollars. Yeah, thanks mate, <laughs> I'm really pleased with it. Very nice. I thought. think it's the best scape I've ever done, seriously. <laughs> what do you think in the comments, guys? Let us know. Is this the best scape you've ever seen me do? Certainly one of the biggest. Definitely has the potential. I'm voting for it, George. I'm biased. Oh, you're voting, yeah. <laughs> but it had to, seriously has the potential, you know. But we'll talk more in detail when it's full and the lights are on. But um, it's been an epic job, actually, and it's been absolutely joyous. So thank you. Thank you to Shiraz for oh, thank you, allowing me into his beautiful home. We've had some really good chats, haven't we? <laughs> quite a few, quite a few. Really a lovely couple of days. Yeah, man. Yeah, really, really it's been cool. experience. Very, very nice one. Thanks, George. Yeah, my pleasure, mate. Absolutely, my pleasure. Here I am with my great friend, Hello. Shiraz, <laughs> and he's taken me to the roof garden at Canary Wharf. And we're going to go for a couple of beers. That's it. Well That's deserved, good. I'd say. <laughs> While we're waiting for that tank to fill, the slowest filling tank in the world. <laughs> Got some nice bamboos. Yeah. That's great. You've been to the Eden Project in Cornwall, yeah? No, I haven't. That's amazing. Yeah. This is beautiful, isn't it? It's got a whole bunch of um, maples here. How cool is this? How long has this been established? Um, yeah. I think about three, four years now. Okay. Yeah, it's been a while, but it's really like come to its own. It's yeah, really, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it all like automatically irrigated, I guess? I think so, but I think there's someone who comes in and curates it. Yeah, and it's fun. That's beautiful. I think they've got the um, South American biotope. They've got a bit of um, Asian, Japanese. But they've got a few biotopes in like areas. And then they get more palm, <laughs> carrot. <laughs> they've got like zones. Yeah. Amazing. I didn't even realise this was here. Expect a treat. Beautiful. This is fancy. Fancy schmancy. <laughs> wow. Where's the, where's the pub though? I'm gonna head down. Okay, cool. Okay, here we are. The tank is almost full, the lights are on, and I need to go home unfortunately, so I'm not gonna quite see it filled, but you get the idea. I think it's pretty epic. What do you think, guys? Amazing. Thank you. Wow, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is... It's epicness all over. <laughs> hard to get a sense of scale in the video, but... Sure, can you stand in the corner and people yeah. can see how big this tank is? Ta-da! Ta-da! Look at this, look at this. Welcome to my... Welcome to my crib. <laughs> oh, look at this thing. Wow. No, oh, this looks great. Wow. I think people know what the plants are. I'm not going to go through all the plants. Um, water's really clear. It is. It should be, considering how slow it feels. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, next steps. Well, Shiro's will wait till it's filled. Put yeah. the pumps on, the recirculation pumps, CO2. Yeah is all fitted ready i'm going to come back in a few weeks when i've got going off to toronto and chicago and stuff so it will be nicely settled in by then but yeah the, we're going to run probably 10 bubbles a second you're going to add 30 milliliters of fertilizer a day for the first few weeks three weeks time probably add the first fish and shrimp we're thinking of harlequins borers and pearl barames yeah yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the process. It's arguably the best scape I've ever done. Let me know in the comments what you think. And what fish would you stock? Let us know in the comments. Everywhere you look, it looks great. Look at all these places where the fish can swim through. Magnificent, even if I do say so myself. 
So, um, Shiraz, I want to thank you so much for thank inviting me into your beautiful home. And Pam, I uh, really enjoyed myself, made some new friends and had some great conversations. It's been a real privilege, George, to have you around here doing this and, you know, letting us into your craft here. So thank you so much for coming it's, and doing this for us. It's absolutely my pleasure. It's what I do and what I love to do. And I'm really glad to be able to share my passion with you guys. I'm going to get a bit emotional in a minute, so, yeah. Mm -hmm.